to Spaced Out Radio's Cryptid Tales. My name is Amber Becker, and today, if you watched last two weeks ago, la- that week's episode, my goodness, if you watched that episode a couple of weeks ago, you know we were talking about the Kraken. Yes, that is right, that giant tentacly creature out there in the world. Now, I did mention Cthulhu in that video. That being said, I did mention Cthulhu, however, is not a creature in our actual world. It is an HP Lovecraft, but it is just a made up creature for that realm. But what if I told you that there is actually a cryptid creature, something that is kind of like that? Well, guess what? I wouldn't be here making a video if there wasn't. So that means for you guys, there actually is a creature that is kind of like the Cthulhu in a way. Now, what this creature is called is actually, bear with me here because of course it is in a language I do not speak. Kishaku, I hope, is the way to pronounce that. So it is one of 63 weird germs that were actually documented by an unknown author in a book of medical knowledge back in 1568 in Osaka. Yes, all the way over in Japan, this creature was documented. It was said to have the body of a badger as well as the face with tentacles, like an octopus. So... I don't know. In my professional opinion, it kind of reminds me and a lot of other people of Zoiberg from Futurama. If you guys know who I'm talking about, I'll pop up a picture here on the screen. But this creature, so this creature actually belongs, like I said, as part of a book that was written by an unknown author describing 63 different bugs that were said to affect the body, whether they climbed into the body somehow via mouth, nose, wherever else you can think of, um, or we inhaled them, ingested them through our foods, etc., etc., etc. Now, the practice of taking care of these ailments was all pretty standard. Usually it was herb treatments, which of course in Asian culture is very, very relevant. Um, You know, traditional Japanese Chinese medicine is very herbal based, as well as our own. Not everything is made out of chemicals, people. So it was herb treatment as well as acupuncture. Now, there's also certain things and certain ways to treat these bugs depending on the kind that they were. This one in particular was treated if you didn't like um, the herb or acupuncture side of things. I know I hate needles. I could never do acupuncture. I It creeps me out to even see videos of it. It is said that this bug, this creature that invades your body is actually very attracted to oily foods. So you either eat a lot of oily foods to keep it under control and it doesn't ail you, or you eat the stomach of a tiger and that is supposed to cure everything. Keep in mind this is written back in the 1500s so I don't know what was going on back then but I personally would not want to eat a tiger stomach. Um, I love tigers and I would rather have it living and running around than eating its stomach. So. I'd probably go the herb acupuncture and oily food route if I got down or had this bug crawl inside of me. There isn't really much known outside of this book that does detail this bug very, very, very vaguely. Um, But I thought it was very interesting to see that there is something that was written so long ago that kind of describes a Cthulhu-like creature, but also is a mystical being in a lot of ways because nobody really knows what it is. So, that being said, what do you guys think about that? Would you take the acupuncture? Would you take the herbs? Or would you go for the tiger stomach to relieve yourself of this tiny little 
microorganism that lives inside your body? It's a good question and I want to hear all of your answers down below in the comments. That is it for today's video. I know it was a super sweet and short one, but it's super sweet and short, so there you have it. A huge shout out to Ron Bumblefoot Thal for all of our music here on Spaced Out Radio. And do not forget to head on over to spacedoutradio.com to join the Space Travelers Club for $5 a month, where you can access all of our archives, forums, and live chat during the shows. Do not forget to tune into Spaced Out Radio every single day of the week. Dave has it for five days, Everett's got it on Sundays, and well, Saturdays are floating on a breeze right now. So we are just loving every minute of it. We hope to see you guys there. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, hit the notifications so that we can fill your feed with wonders of the world. And don't forget, you can also head over and grab some swag from the SOR vault because we have merch. That's right. We've got lots. We have t-shirts, cups, stickers, magnets, you name it. It's there. And I know you guys want it. So why not treat yourself to something this early in 2020? That is it for me. And I will see you guys in the next episode. <laughs>